this is frustrating. Whoa. I'm not really sure what I was expecting. It's not like the wildlife's not here. I'm just having trouble being close enough to get any good photos. We'll see how this goes. Well, hello and welcome to the Skagit River. I am Liam and I'm out here taking photos of eagles, bald eagles to be exact, and I'm in Washington State. And the Skagit River is a famous place in Washington State to see eagles. In the winter time, they come in the hundreds and I'm very excited. This is a trip that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm just out in this area for the day and yeah, I'm doing my best to take photos of these eagles. What I've got here is a rented 100 to 400 EF lens. It is a Canon lens. And this is the Mark II version of this lens, which is pretty well known in the photography world as being a very, very good lens. It came out over 10 years ago, but it's very good. I rented it because it's a little too pricey for me. I've got a mirrorless camera that I'm actually filming with right now and I've got the cheaper, newer version of the mirrorless 100 to 400, but I've got this lens on my old camera, my T7i crop sensor camera, which gives it a little more reach, right? This is a full frame lens on a crop sensor body, so I get a little bit more reach, and I've spotted an eagle out here, um, one of many that I've seen driving around the area, but in this particular location, this eagle is quite far away. It's up on a tree and it's still. So I'm zoomed in as much as I can with this telephoto. And yeah, I'm trying to dial in my settings and get my first photo of the day. I'm glad you're here. Now, one of the things that I am hoping to see today is some eagles going for some of that dead salmon carcass that washes up on these rocks. And that's really what I'm looking out for on the ground. Obviously, they'll be grabbing stuff out of the water as well, all this dead salmon that, that is floating down the river. And I'm really, really, really hoping to see some eagles on the ground, jumping around, spreading their wings, you know, trying to get at some of these fish, some action shots, if you will. It's lovely seeing them up in the trees from a distance. Um, they're beautiful, but I'd also really like to get to see some lower to the ground, maybe a little bit closer, but we'll see how it goes today. At this point, it was time to move on to another spot along the river. So I packed up and made the short walk back to my car all the while keeping an eye out for eagles flying by. Not sure where I can go from here. <laughs> As I was finding my way to the next riverbank, I did see a few eagles fly away. So I proceeded a little more slowly up to this viewpoint, which looked like just the kind of spot where I'd see eagles on the ground. Unfortunately, I still had to get my camera out of my bag, which meant I couldn't take any pictures as they flew away. So I've got the camera set up here, and one thing that I'm curious about is will these eagles feel comfortable enough coming back down to the shoreline? There was just a bunch of boats that passed through, uh, you know, kind of rowboats, people who are on the boats taking photos from the water, which is cool. And then there was me come in, so I'm wondering if these three eagles will feel comfortable coming back down. We'll see. 
I'll try to be very still. So one of these juvenile bald eagles has flown very close to me and it kind of spooked me how big these birds are. It is a massive animal and to see it kind of flying in your direction is pretty cool. So I'm waiting for it to kind of come out from behind some branches because I can see it up there, this big dark mass up in the trees, but it's behind these branches so can't really get a clear shot and it's very very bright out so really I need you know I need the animal to be maybe in a shady patch or something where there's not it's not backlit because that kind of washes out the image but really cool moment It has flown away, but it's just slightly further up the river and it's kind of stretching its wings, looking like it's it's gonna fly around a little bit more, but it's just really cool how close it got to me. And I think that it just shows that if you stand or sit and wait, you can be rewarded um, when it comes to wildlife. But this is really my first experience with this, so really awesome to see them get pretty close. In fact, I think there's two over there now. <laughs> Better get back to my camera. But the eagles proved as shy as ever and were impossible to photograph through the trees. This didn't stop me from continuing to watch and wait. I've been standing here for a good 20 to 30 minutes and these uh, juvenile bald eagles have not not moved. They're just out of sight around the corner. They have just enough privacy for themselves to feel comfortable and I understand that's fine. For me, um, I might have to go look in some other places. There's another part of Washington that's nearby um, on the other side of Mount Baker if you're looking on the map and there's rumored to be a lot of eagles over there as well and so it's lunchtime, I think it's low activity time for these birds. Hopefully, as we get closer to the late afternoon, I'll see more of them. But for now, I think I'm gonna leave these guys, head back to my car, and go to the next location. Well, I made it to my second location and I am having a late, late lunch and it's raining. So it's about 2.30 in the afternoon and when it's cloudy and rainy like this, that means that honestly, I have about an hour left of adequate light I think for this kind of photography. So I'm gonna finish my food and, and get out there and try to stay dry. We'll see how this goes. This is frustrating. <laughs> I'm back out by a river, just like I was earlier in the day. This time I brought out my chair so that I can sit down and relax for a while. There's not a ton of time left, but I'm gonna try. There are eagles out here, but 
it is yet to be seen if they will be close enough and if they'll come round. I'm not really sure what I was expecting. I guess I kind of thought if you go to the areas where there's known to be this wildlife that they will just be there and it's pretty naive of me to, to not really think through fully the behavior patterns of the animal, the you know the weather patterns, the the parks and areas that I might or might not have access to. I did look up quite a bit but I still feel a little unprepared and you know this is my first trip solely dedicated to trying to photograph bald eagles and luckily I live in Washington State so I can come back to areas like this again and again and the other thing is it's not like the wildlife's not here I'm just having trouble being close enough to get any good photos <sighs> There are photos, it's just really far away. I can see one over there, and it's not a bad composition in and of itself, but I'm, I'm worried about having to crop in so much on this photo that I lose a lot of, a lot of detail. So, again, is it close enough? I don't know. Here comes one. There was a juvenile flying that way, keeping its distance. <laughs> After sitting and waiting for something to happen, I decided to try to get closer to the eagles in the trees nearby, at least as close as I could get without scaring them away, which is what happened earlier in the day. These eagles were perched nicely on the bare trees in the distance, and while I was able to capture some images of them silhouetted, I couldn't capture any detail from that distance and with that low light. I did manage to capture this photograph of an eagle that was right above me as I was exiting the park, and with some fairly heavy editing in Lightroom, I was able to bring out some detail and some brightness and get a decent shot out of it. This trip was definitely one of the more challenging photography experiences that I've had, and I have three big takeaways that I wanted to share with you here at the end. The first one is about expectations. When I went into this, I really went with this expectation that I'm gonna get these amazing photos. I'm gonna see eagles playing like in snow along the riverbank because snow was forecasted. And I just thought I'll see them jumping around each other, you know, fighting for salmon. And I'd get these great action shots or maybe an eagle flying close by and I'd get a photo with so much detail that you could zoom in and see the detail in its eye. Basically, my expectation was National Geographic level photographs. And to be honest with you, that set me up to fail. I think in the future, I should have the expectation that I'm gonna go try something, especially if it's something for the first time that I'm doing, I'm gonna go try it, explore the area, and if I come away with a great photo, that's a bonus, rather than the opposite, where I was expecting all these great photos from the beginning. The second thing that I take away from this trip is that I actually wasn't fully prepared. So I have waterproof hiking boots, but I could have used rain boots, you know, the, the bigger boots that allow you really to walk in a little bit deeper water. There were a number of times on this day when I was walking over these shallow streams and while I did have waterproof hiking boots, as you saw, there were still moments where I was fumbling and maybe tripped and, you know, my feet almost got wet because of that, so rain boots would have really helped. I also didn't have binoculars, which feels like a rookie mistake when you're trying to go see something like a bald eagle that I know will hang out in trees a lot of the time. So 
it felt a little bit like on this trip, while I did look up where I was going, I didn't really fully plan out and list out everything I needed, and I didn't prepare enough the night before to make sure that all those things were ready. In the future, when I'm going on wildlife photography trips, I'm going to make sure I prepare even more than my typical landscape photography trip. And the final takeaway that I have is simply that wildlife photography is hard. It's different than landscape photography. It's different than other types of photography. And I need to respect the process that wildlife photographers go through where they're learning about the animals, they're learning about their behavior, they're learning about the gear that they need, they're learning about when to be there, they're learning about how to take these photos. All of this learning that has to happen, I need to appreciate and, and embrace that process. And I think that that goes back to my expectations. Having never really done a trip like this, expect it to be a learning process and don't get frustrated on the day. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching to the end. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you want to see more of my photography trips in Washington, the Pacific Northwest, and beyond, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.